Stale and Jason Schaefer are going to share with you some of the things that they've done to become, I believe, the first retailer to do an IPO in quite a while. So, Tony. Thank you, Mark. Well, this isn't going to be as exciting as social media. It's kind of we're going to do a little blocking and tackling, I think, today, and talk a little bit about inventory. Um, let me give you. Uh, well, first, I got to do the. Uh, there we go. Safe harbor. Everybody's seen that. Now we can move on. All right. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about uh, the vitamin shop. Um, it's it's kind of an interesting retailer. Probably a lot of people in the audience have not heard of the vitamin shop, but uh, it's a health and wellness retailer. Uh, we have uh, 450 stores in 37 states across the United States, and people go, wow, that's, I didn't realize, I didn't, didn't realize you were that big. We have about, uh, our stores are about 3,500 square feet. We have about 8,000 SKUs in each of the stores, and uh, we've had positive comps for the last three years. In the fourth quarter of last year, we had a 7% comp. And a lot of the performance of the business has been really driven by uh, some of the stuff we've done in inventory, managing our in-stocks, and managing the SKU count that we have. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. To set the stage a little bit, back in uh, 2006 when I joined the Vitamin Shop, uh, they were owned by Irving Place Capital, which is a private equity group. Uh, they'd been into this business for four years, and they were struggling uh, to get sales growth out of the business. Uh, they wanted to accelerate the growth of the company and build more stores, but they had to improve the performance of the business. Our in-stocks for the company were around 85%. That's customer-facing in-stock. Our direct back order for our internet and catalog business was 20%. It was abysmal. We had all the wrong inventory in all the wrong places, and for three years in a row, we hadn't been able to get over 2.8 to 2.9 turns of our inventory. It was, a, it was a tough position for the company to, to be in. And we looked at our supply chain. We had one DC that was servicing, at that time, about 230 stores. And we weren't sure about the capacity of that DC long term. And this is a bit of a, in the sports nutrition side of the business, it's a bit of a fashion business. You've got to get into products. When Oprah Winfrey talks about a side juice, if we can't be there tomorrow, we're in trouble. We're going to miss that opportunity. So we had to be fast to market. So we looked at all these business challenges. And we, what did we say? You know, What does good look like? What did we want to be when we grow up and we're a, a billion dollar company, retail company. We wanted to improve our in-stocks to 97%. We wanted a direct back order to be world class around 2%. We wanted to improve our inventory productivity. In the short term, we wanted to see if we could get the four turns of our inventory. And we wanted to lower our cycle times to our stores. If you think about it, we had stores in Hawaii and we were so servicing them from North Bergen. So if we could take a day out of the lead time or two days out of the lead time, that was a huge, huge opportunity both for inventory productivity and in-stock for us. And we had to develop the alignment and the organizational structure to support uh, the goals that we had for success. Inventory and replenishment. Jason is the guy that was responsible for a number of changes that we put in place after we developed the strategy. So I'll let Jason take it over. Thank you, Tony. So as we, as we began, we started looking at our inventory system options and we really broke it into four different options. We can continue doing status quo, so what we had been doing previously, which was utilizing our current system for replenishment. And what this meant was we had fixed min-maxes that weren't very dynamic around sales or changing supply chain patterns out in our stores. And for ordering from our vendors, it meant using basic weeks of supply logic to, make sh to fill the DC that wasn't always connected with the amount of inventory that we needed out in the stores. And, we, do, and as we, we talked more and more about this, it obviously wasn't meeting the expectations that we wanted as a business. The second option we looked at was to modify the current systems replenishment module. So we could take the existing system that we had today and begin to modify it and try to make it what we wanted, but we felt that that came along with way too much risk because as you go into modify a system, you often end up uh, with inadvertent results or, or things that you didn't expect happening uh, that are tied together in the system it, uh, as you begin to change things. The third piece that we looked at was implementing our traditional replenishment system. 
And as we looked at our business and what we needed to happen, we just felt that this wasn't a fit for us. We didn't have the right resources across the business in the inventory management team or in IT to be able to support a traditional replenishment system, nor did we have the money to be able to implement a traditional replenishment system. We also wanted to find a solution that we were going to be able to put in very quickly and be able to drive results fast. And putting a traditional replenishment system in it often takes a year or two years to get the system in and tune it to get the results that you actually want as a business. So the fourth option that we began to look at, which was new to us at a vitamin shop, and we hadn't really talked about this much, was an outsourced replenishment model. And as we started to talk about this, uh, a partner came in mind uh, around 4R uh, because of an internal resource that had worked with them previously. So I'll take just a couple minutes and tell everybody a little bit about who 4R is. They work with a variety of retail clients from staple items, much like the vitamin shop, to short-lived fashion items. And, and I mentioned that they're an outsourced replenishment model. And what that means is each week we take our key data in the system, our sales and our margin data and our inventory position, and we feed that over to the 4R team who then optimizes all of that information and sends us back the optimal inventory levels for our DCN store, which we then plug into our ERP system. Our ERP system then acts as a giant calculator uh, to make sure that we're generating the right orders and allocating the right inventory out to the stores to meet the settings that the 4R team has sent back to us. I mentioned DC and store replenishment. 4R also does promotion and markdown optimization uh, as well, and at the vitamin shop, we're using DC store and promotion optimization right now. So I mentioned um, that 4R sends back to us the optimal inventory levels. The way they do this is through what they call profit optimized inventory. And ultimately what this is, is each week when we send over their data for every store SKU combination, they look for the lowest cost or the highest profit model for us. And what that means is um, carrying the right amount of inventory but not too much based on our inventory carrying cost versus the offset of, of lost sales. So if you think about a traditional replenishment model, ultimately what it asks you to do is set a service level and you're often thinking to yourself what's the right service level to have the lowest amount of inventory but capture the most sales so that's what this model actually does it actually does that it doesn't ask you to set a target service level it actually goes out based on the sales margin data that you have as well as the inventory carrying cost inputs that we provide and gives us our highest profitability solution and we'll talk a little bit about what that's done for us here as we get into our results about 0.2 percent over all the units we ship that injects a lot of inventory inaccuracy into the supply chain so what does all this mean for us and what has it done um, store out of stocks and direct back order rates have significantly improved and that was actually off of a slightly higher base than Tony mentioned originally we're almost to uh, Tony's definition of success for for store in stocks and our direct back order rate is actually five times lower than the number that, that Tony quoted initially all while driving our company inventory turnover up 10 percent and, and we continue to have a focus on driving inventory turn for the company We've also done this while supporting a growth in assortment because one of our brand strategies is to have a broad assortment for our customers. Around the inventory manager uh, performance, the vendor to DCPO shortages have decreased by 40% in the last 18 months and on-time shipments have more than doubled. So that's what the focus of the inventory manager managers have been on is, is driving performance there and they've done that while moving the vendor lead times down almost 50 percent since we started focusing on that so we're getting better fill rates and better on-time shipments from our vendors and getting them faster what this has allowed us to do is significantly improve the DC in stock while uh, reducing the inventory by over 30 percent so it's it's great asset utilization of our DC and on the back end our DC to store lead times have have decreased by over a full day or over 10 percent so we've been very happy with the results we've seen 
I know is uh, throughout the conference there's been a lot of discussion about social media and, and marketing and demand creation, customer acquisition, customer retention and so forth. Our chief marketing officer often reminds me, although not nearly as often as he used to, that the hardest part of his job is creating demand. And it's really a shame if we create that demand and we can't service it because we don't have the product in stock. So that's what we've been focused on the last couple of years and we believe that's all this mean for us and what has it done. Um, store out of stocks and direct back order rates have significantly improved and that was actually off of a slightly higher base than Tony mentioned uh, originally. We're almost to uh, Tony's definition of success for, for store in stocks and our direct back order rate is actually five times lower than the number that, that Tony quoted initially all while driving our company inventory turnover up 10 percent and, and we continue to have a focus on driving inventory turn for the company. We've also done this while supporting a growth in assortment because one of our brand strategies is to have a broad assortment for our customers. Around the inventory manager uh, performance, the vendor to DCPO shortages have decreased by 40% in the last 18 months and on-time shipments have more than doubled. So that's what the focus of the inventory manager managers have been on is, is driving performance there and they've done that while moving the vendor lead times down almost 50 percent since we started focusing on that. So we're getting better fill rates and better on-time shipments from our vendors and getting them faster. What this has allowed us to do is significantly improve the DC in stock while uh, reducing the inventory by over 30 percent. So it's, it's great asset utilization of our DC. And on the back end, our DC to store lead times have, have decreased by over a full day or over 10 percent. So we've been very happy with the results we've seen. I know is, uh, throughout the conference there's been a lot of discussion about social media and, and marketing and demand creation, customer acquisition, customer retention and so forth. Our chief mar marketing officer often reminds me, although not nearly as often as he used to, that the hardest part of his job is creating demand. And it's really a shame if we create that demand and we can't service it because we don't have the product in stock. So that's what we've been focused on the last couple of years and we believe that's been one of the biggest drivers of our results at the Vitamin Shop. All right.